So on these presentations, we have been talking about ways to manage your software process, uh, ways to conduct different sorts of design works to get an idea on how the software works. But this is actually the first presentation where we will be talking about how to go from customers and users and vague idea on what we might want to do into actually having a deployable software. So on this presentation we will be talking about requirements analysis or gathering requirements meaning that we will be taking the first step from customers and users the requirements which list what the system should be doing and how it should be functioning. So the first activity of course is to understand what the, what the requirement is. The requirement is a condition or functionality that the system must meet or implement to be useful or at least functional in the tasks it's been designed for and give a purpose for the software's existence. So basically there's functional and non-functional requirements. The, non -fu uh, the functional requirements are something that the system has to do. For example, be able to uh, accept Excel charge, uh, charts and calculate different things from the uh, given input data. Or uh, call an elevator when the user presses a button. The non-functional requirements are more of a general requirements, like that the elevator has to be on your floor within a minute, or that the system should handle all the transactions between the client and the server uh, with uh, encrypted connections. These sort of things, basically stuff which is defining how the system should behave and what the system should be doing when user does something. Also, of course, identifying who are the users, what they should be doing, and what are the services and actual purpose that the software is f uh, fulfilling. Okay, so, on the terminology, the uh, discovering of the client's requirements or needs is called requirements elicitation or requirements capture, if we want to use more common language term. And basically, this is uh, more or less conducting interviews and surveys with the clients and potential customers or target audiences to understand how and why we need to have the system, what is something that could sell to, uh, to our customer base, or get an idea what our customer base will be. Of course, since we will be talking about a large number of people, we might also be uh, having a huge number of different requirements or needs, or overlapping needs, or conflicting needs. Uh, for example, we could say that one user group wants the background to be green, and the other one wants the background to be red, so what we actually need to do is create a requirement that says that the background color can be changed. So this is what the requirements analysis does. We take all the collected or captured requirements and then do an analysis work to get a list of ideas or requirements, functional and non-functional, to be able to design and later implement the software. So, how do we then collect the requirements? This is just a list of typical examples on how the requirements collection can be done. For example, stakeholder interviews. We know kinda who our customers will be, who are the target audiences, or, what, or we can interview the company we are doing the software. So we can interview the stakeholders. We can have joint sessions with the stakeholders, meaning that we can have a workshop or a design meeting where we draft the system or the system uh, user interface, for example, to get an idea on what the stakeholders and users and other people who have interest in our software will want. Of course, uh, the requirements list may be part of the contract. For example, if government orders a software from our company, they may include a list of things that the system has to be able to do, 
So of course, these are the requirements that we at least have to be able to, com uh, to complete successfully in order to actually get the money from the government. Actually, there's a one life example in Finland where the uh, police force, police national police, declined a contract from one company which failed to meet the contractual requirements in a, a sane amount of time. Of course, other ways of doing the requirements analysis and elicitation are, for example, prototypes for illust and. These, the prototypes are especially important in some cases because people are much more uh, people are much more efficient at giving feedback on something they have seen or tried out instead of telling what they actually want. Also, this leads to use cases and later to the requirement specification document. But basically, these are all the different things that happen when we are elicitating requirements and doing an analysis to weed out the impossible requirements, the duplicate requirements or conflicting requirements. So, why do we need to do analysis? Why do we need can why cannot we just trust our customer? Well, the same way same thing goes the other way around. Why the customer can't always trust the software company? Well, we are working with people, so we can say that users do not understand what they want. We also know that users do not commit to the written requirements, meaning that they might say something or approve something, but then want something else. Also, the feature bloat, which is usually, or featureitis, which is quite common in badly managed software projects, means that the user wants new requirements after the old, old ones are fixed. So in addition of doing something for our customer, they want that we do also something else. So this is something that we have to take care of the, and have some sane cutoff point for introducing new in, uh, requirements into our project. Also, users may not participate on the elicitation or reviews, they are just saying that I uh, just do something, we'll approve it, and then say that, okay, this is nothing like we wanted. The uh, users may not necessarily understand technology. I mean, I have seen a situation where a customer wanted a software company to create first a search function based on strings, and then add a feature where the strings are replaced with contextually similar documents, which is of course really really complicated thing to do. The other way around, the developers do not necessarily understand users. For example, lawyers may be giving a list of requirements or doctors or any specialist with a really specific lingo in their work, and the developers may not understand what the user wants, because developers are software engineers, not lawyers, doctors, or anything like that. Also, uh, this brings us to the two final problems. The developers want to force their own views, and the analysis is done by technical experts instead of domain experts or pe persons with people skills. The designed by engineer is a term which exists for a reason. You really need to be able to create the requirements so that your users can actually use your software or understand what is going on with the software. Okay, so quickly going through some artifacts which should be produced when conducting the requirements analysis. Of course, the vision that what views the different stakeholders have about the system and what are we actually doing, a glossary for basic concepts of the system, sort of a use case model which tells us what use cases we will be having, a list of specifications, this is usually talking about the uh, non-functional requirements since the functional requirements are usually parts of the use cases. 
also, in addition, all the needed prototypes and sketches about different aspects of the system to get a good idea on what we actually need to be doing. This is important since the requirements are nothing more and nothing less than a list of things that the system should be able to do and on our next step we will be creating an analytical architecture our first concept, uh, concept of the system based on these collected requirements. So, going back into this uh, requirements list uh, the requirements analysis means that we are basically doing the following things. We list the requirements candidates, uh, do the specification of the environment we need to have for the system to function, gather and describe the functional requirements and non-functional requirements, do requirements analysis to see that there is no overlap or conflicts in our requirements and define our use cases. So basically, what is a good uh, list of uh, doing uh, work in requirements gathering phase is something like this. List all properties required from the system. Uh, list may include wishes and ideas that will probably not be implemented since they are supplement supplementary requirements which may be done if there is time, money or in other incentive to actually complete them, but we can also always drop out things. We have to have the stakeholder needs, we have to define the system features, we have to have the software requirements done, and in addition to all these things that would be nice, it would also be good to have a status of the property, is it proposed or accepted, do we have a budget for it, how much this requirement will cost, is this a priority requirement, is, it, is this required by our contract, and risk evaluation, which means that how difficult or how critical this requirement is to implement, since some requirements may be so important that the entire contract is in peril if the one requirement fails to be implemented. So. Overall, these are the, uh, well, this is the quick representation of how to collect requirements, starting with customers and ending up with a list of things that we need to do so that we can actually create a analytical architecture and the UML designs so that we can actually start doing the development work.